Hi, I'm Daryl Hocking, coordinator of the Master of English and New Media Studies, an exciting new degree which explores the ever-increasing relationship between new media and spoken, written, or visual communication in English. Like the complexity of new media, the focus of the program is extensive and engaging. It examines game narrative design, interactive storytelling, web communication, multimodal and corpus analysis of social media, text mining, memes, net speak, fake news, hate speech, and virtual reality, among many other areas. Importantly, however, the Master of English in Your Media Studies provides you with the opportunity to creatively develop or explore your own area of interest in new media communication. To achieve this, we have a 30-point explorative project paper, as well, of course, as the capstone thesis or dissertation. We'll discuss some of the research projects of our graduates uh, later in the webinar, but in brief, they've involved the development of independent online games, uh, narratives for MMOs, as well as the creation of 3D VR environments. Other projects have analyzed communication on Urban Dictionary, the images on, on Instagram, the websites of digital nomads, and our ability to recognize online fake news. An important focus of our program involves the transition to doctoral study, and a number of our graduates are now working on their PhDs. Other graduates are employed as game narrative designers, social media and PR advisors, new media content managers, copywriters, and communication project managers. You just heard from Daryl Hawking. His research uses discourse and corpus analysis to focus on the role played by language and communication in creative settings. This includes the impact of online language and other digital resources on the creative practices found in new and social media contexts. He has authored the books Communicating Creativity, The Discursive Facilitation of Creative Activity in Arts, and The Impact of Everyday Language Change on the Practices of Visual Arts. Daryl also has a research background in academic writing and language education, particularly in the creative disciplines. He is co-author of the internationally successful English language series, Innovations, of course, in natural English. Philippa Smith is the heart of the program. Her expertise lies in the cross-section of language communication and digital technologies. She was the executive director of the NZ arm of the World Internet Project, which researched the social impact of the internet across 40 countries. And in 2018, she spent three months as a visiting fellow at the Oxford Internet Institute in the UK studying online counterspeech. Philippa has published articles and book chapters on new media discourses, journalism, digital divides, and discrimination. Her co-edited book, The Dark Side of Digital Platforms, was published in 2020. I'm Toph Eklund. My pronouns are they and them, and I'm the program's resident game studies and comic studies specialist. I do media, critical and queer theory, internet subcultures, creative writing, practice-based scholarship, and the geeky and weird in general. I wrote the Autumn Harvest web series, edited the game book, The Unconventional Dwarf, and have created a handful of zine comics and mini games. I do a lot of games journalism as well as formal scholarship. And at present, I'm working on Sunken States, a tabletop role-playing game about activists working to save what they can in a world bent on its own destruction. Hi, my name's Philippa Smith, and I've been lecturing on the master's program since its inception. We have a number of fascinating papers that have been specifically designed for our master's program. Game narrative and interactive storytelling is a course that explores the potential and power of interactive storytelling, especially, but not exclusively, video games. Students engage both creatively and critically, creating their own short narrative games and analyzing games in terms of their gameplay and story. Important techniques like world building and branching narrative are taught as are key issues in game studies and gaming culture, from game of the gate and industry scandals to the potential of games for change. New media, performance and practice. This is my specialty. It's a course that is designed to help postgraduate students identify and explore topics they may wish to study for their thesis or dissertation. It takes a critical approach to examining an array of digital technologies and social media phenomena. For example, online communities, misinformation, disinformation, influences, digital citizenship, privacy and surveillance. 
Any controversy surrounding digital communication and how this impacts society are discussed within the classroom situation. Students learn to become critical thinkers, develop research literature skills, and assess different methodological approaches that they may wish to apply in their work. The paper Discourse Analysis shows students how to analyze the language and images found in both traditional and new media contexts to reveal, among other things, how they typically reproduce certain cultural rules, values, or assumptions, and how this shapes the particular beliefs of the reader or the viewer. This process includes introducing students to the computer-based corpus analysis of large collections of texts and the use of software to identify and analyze the emotional content of a text. English and New Media Research Methods is a course that covers all the major methodologies and some of the most relevant theory for graduate study in English and New Media. Students learn how to design and conduct interviews, take field notes, analyze media, engage in close reading and in practice-based study, and also learn how to apply indigenous critical post-structural and intersectional theory. The tagline for Demi Shanzel's Library of Babel is, deep within the computer, a library grows. The thesis project that became the Library of Babel grew out of a deep dissatisfaction with social media culture and a desire for something slower and kinder. Demi describes Library of Babel as an experimental prototype designed around smaller acts of storytelling and prose and the wish for more intimate spaces of shared asynchronous communication. They say, in many ways, this game is a small recollection of my earliest internet moments of discovering the sometimes strange and surreal communities that grew there and how distant yet intimate it all felt. Bringing a level of programming experience to the degree, Demi was able to expand their skill set and create a visually striking network game where users are invited to share snippets of prose, poetry, or even just their own thoughts and locate them spatially in a minimalist uh, two-dimensional environment that scrolls freely, as well as to comment on other users' posts, not by replying, but through spatial proximity. Everything in the Library of Babel is completely anonymous, and the only connection between posts is their proximity, inviting people to explore and to consider the way that different thoughts and posts relate to each other without any of the mechanics of shaming, liking, or at worst, real world doxing and swatting that occur on social media. Monique Porteus's thesis involved an analysis of the images posted by Instagram fashion influencers. She was interested in finding out whether there's a statistical correlation between the number of likes a post receives and the different ways that the people and objects in the images are portrayed. Among many other things, she found that posts with the color purple received more likes than those of other colors, posts that show a high degree of intimacy between the influencer and others in the image also received a lot of likes, and posts that involve an extreme long shot rather than a close-up were also liked by followers. Overall, however, um, Monique found that the types of images that influencers tend to post the most ironically seem to receive the least number of likes. Chiara Chester Cronin conducted a really interesting study examining responses to the New Zealand government's 2019 wellbeing budget by looking at and comparing online news stories with New Zealanders' posts on the social media platform Twitter. She applied a corpus-assisted critical discourse analysis approach to analyse the various texts of the policy document, news articles and tweets. Chiara found that while the news media frequently reproduced the government's preferred reading of the budget, it was the Twitter users who took the opportunity to publicly challenge and debate government policy online. This demonstrates how social media can give a voice to many people in the virtual public sphere. Awareness of depression has increased in recent years, but the social and internalized stigma associated with depression is still strong. 
and empathy narratives about depression rarely consider its intersections with issues of race, class, creed, gender, and sexual identity. Coming to the program without any prior experience with programming or game development, Nam Tran taught himself the RPG Maker application, located appropriate assets for a realistic present day setting, and surveyed depression sufferers about their thoughts, hopes, and fears. In doing so, he was able to create Darkness and Haven, a game set during lockdown and representing people in their own environments, all fictionalized, but reflecting real depression sufferers of various creeds, gender identities, and other backgrounds, experiences, their living environments, their hopes, and their fears regarding their experience of depression. Darkness and Haven is a work of fiction that tells the truth. So Yunong Lee's thesis examined whether personal background attributes such as age, gender, level of qualification and so on, impact on our ability to recognize whether the online news is fake or real. The research involved asking over 80 participants to identify whether a number of online news items were fake or real. And her data found that those in the 45 to 54 age group had a much better ability of identifying fake news than those in other age groups. Those with higher qualifications were more able to identify fake news and the more time people spend on social media each day, the less likely they are able to recognize whether the news they see online is fake or real. We've been really impressed with how our students have used the skills and knowledge learned in our master's program to take them forward in many exciting career pathways. Some of these include practicing law and finding that court work was greatly enhanced by the students' knowledge when it came to dealing with evidence identified in people's social media communication. One student is now running her own online marketing company, which is concerned with ethical branding and helping clients use digital marketing strategies to promote their products and services. Another student works for the New Zealand disability community, where she ensures the views of people with disabilities are listened to and that they have a role in decision making, especially when it comes to the design of accessible digital technologies. And then there's a student who decided to continue his research at doctoral level in the areas of gaming and digital storytelling. Really, the possibilities are endless. So thank you for joining us today. Any questions, please post these in the chat function. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you at AUT.